Hello and welcome back to the Great Unexplained Debate. Uh, here we have a show hosted by me for the next hour. That's who you've got to put up with looking at. Uh, there are three other people here just to make it that little bit easier in your eyes. Uh, this is an unedited show, what we say you see. Now with me today is Sarah Woodward. Thank you very much for joining me, Sarah, for coming back to us. Paranormal expert, founder of White Rose Paranormal. Um, thank you for spending the time to come back to us. Um, next, next, Sarah, we have Phil Wyman, uh, a good mate of mine, someone I've done many investigations with, and I'm always happy to see. Don't see enough of him. Uh, founder of Dead Haunted Nights, paranormal investigator, presenter, author, all round good guy, and seemingly going to run the country at some point. Thank you. Hopefully. <laughs> 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 And next door to me, as usual, is Fred Batt, uh, demonologist, witch expert, um, paranormal investigator. Nice guy. No. no, no. Um, <laughs> thanks very much for joining us. Um, right, today what I, what I want to start talking about is paranormal groups. The reason that, that I think it's a good thing to, to start off with is because there's a lot of rubbish out there. Um, I know we, we've, we've already had a discussion some time ago about, about mediums, about the rubbish that is out there, but paranormal groups suffer a similar kind of thing. Um, just generally, tell me your, your experience of paranormal groups. I know you've both run two very successful paranormal groups that are above reproach, they are very well thought of in the industry, I mean, extremely well thought of, and you, know, you do things properly, which is, which is nice to see. I mean, you know, it's something that, that is, is becoming a bit of a rarity, I think. Probably 80% of the paranormal groups out there are just doing it for a laugh mm. and not doing it for the real reasons. But what, Phil, what's, what's your take on paranormal groups in general, what the state of them, where they are now? Um, obviously since the, the um, popularity has boomed in the last couple of years, they just seem to have sprouted up left, right and centre. Um, and it's like you say, a lot of them out there um, just see it uh, as a bit of a laugh, um, a bit of a, a way to make quick book um, and, and that's not really fair on the people that attend the uh, events and the investigations because they're there to get a proper insight on how things are run um, which is which is what we do we do it we do everything by the book uh, we don't fake anything and we know for a fact um, that there are groups out there and obviously I'm not going to mention any groups we, are, we do know for a fact that certain groups aren't um, as ethical if you like uh, in running their investigations as what we are so, again, it's one of those areas where you've got to choose who, if you're going on a paranormal investigation, you want to uh, uh, sample it for the first time, for instance, you've got to choose who you go with carefully. Make sure you do a lot of background research and get some um, testimonials, that kind of thing. Yeah, Sarah, what's your sort of take on paranormal groups in general? I think there's a, it's a mixed bag, really. You get, um, you, you know, you get the guys that are doing it for fun, which is fair enough, you know, if, it, if they want to do um, a social thing, if it's a hobby. You know, do it for fun, but there's, you, you've got to take it seriously to a certain extent. This is people's properties that you're going into as well. Um, if it is a public events company, then that's a, a completely diff different um, kettle of fish. You mm -hmm. have to take it seriously. There's people that are coming along on your nights that are there to be guided by you. Yeah. Um, I run a White Rose Paranormal, which is not a public events company. It's mm -hmm. just that we've done it out of our interest, out of our own interest, and we're a non-profit, so we don't make money from it. But the thing is, it, it's about <coughs> reputation as well. Like it I said is. earlier, it doesn't, I'm not just sitting here bigging you guys, you guys you, 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 the, the, the um, uh, paranormal groups that you've got. I'm not just bigging them up for the sake of it. But you're here because you have got a great reputation throughout the industry. Now, um, Fred, what, what's your take on paranormal groups? Um, some of the ones I've met uh, that have come to my club, Caesars in London, um, have been okay. But that's organised by little groups by themselves and they've got a lot of people together and it's not a money-making thing. But I had an incident recently where someone had uh, advertised on their Facebook that they were doing a paranormal event at Caesars and they hadn't even booked it with me and so they took all this money from people, 50 pounds a time, through a PayPal account, then closed the PayPal account down and just disappeared with the money. But they didn't disappear because people contacted me and I got trading standards and the police involved and they caught the guy that did it. Also oh, PayPal yeah. are pretty good at, at tracking these, this, uh, that sort of fraud. Well, no, they, they didn't do anything for me, it would, it, I had to do it through the police and trading standards. Mm. I, I know they do have yeah. a very good reputation at uh, yeah. PayPal for that yeah. sort of thing. That, that's that's a, a, a big um, point for us especially, we've found 
lots of nice locations that we'd like to do, not just uh, commercial investigations at, but private investigations at. But because they've already had groups gone in and totally disrespected the property, the people that run the property, mm. it's kind of put a block on us going in there, which is mm. kind of unfair, what, really. Because you, you, you guys have got basically two different business yeah. um, frames, haven't you? I mean, mm. yours is a public event. That's it, yeah. yeah. People come, could come along and obey, and yours, as you say, is, is out of your interest in the paranormal. But I think that... that it's one of the things with, with the, this sort of paranormal explosion that has been, I think it's kind of always been there, but it, in the last sort of 10 years, it kind of exploded. And it almost seemed to do again about five years ago for some reason. You know, it almost sort of went... Mm -hmm. And from having maybe sort of a couple of hundred, 50 to a couple of hundred investigation teams, if that, mm -hmm. you know, 20 years ago, now there are literally thousands, and there's nothing stopping people from saying, I am now... Uh, red candle paranormal uh, uh, investigation. If there is a red candle paranormal investigation, <laughs> I don't actually mean I'm just red candle in front of me. Um, that they could start up their own paranormal thing, and it doesn't matter who they have. They can get anyone they want in there and just turn up haunted places. Because a lot of people think it's a jolly fun thing to do. Mm -hmm. and yeah. isn't, is it? It's it, um, if you do it properly, it's great. Okay, but what you've got to what you've got to remember is you've got to take into account that you're going to be looking after guests throughout the night, you've got to have everything in place properly, you've got to have insurance in place properly, all that kind of thing, and, and make sure that you, your guests have a good time, you know. Um, and unfortunately, the, we, we have quite a few regular customers turn up on events again and again and again, and they do, obviously because we don't stop people going on other companies' events, from, talking from obviously the company perspective, um, and we do get feedback from those people. Mm. And we have heard of cases where they've been on them, they turn up, um, they have about a 10 minute chat about what the location is, what they're supposed to be doing, and then they go, off you go. You're and that's your own it. devices, basically. Exactly, walk around the location on your own. Yeah, not, but but you surely, know. a lot of these people will come to these things, and a lot of them will be first time um, investigators. Mm. So mm -hmm. it'll be the first time that because, you know, let's face it, before this was available, this type of what you know what you do it was, it was available. It, you couldn't really do it. You couldn't go to people's houses for a weekend. No. You know, or the, you the, the, the luckiest thing you could possibly do was go and spend a night in a haunted room in a hotel if yeah. you could get the room. Mm. Um, but that because it's their first time, they need to be nurtured and taught. And exactly. Because you want them to go away. Because I've always had this thing that the more good paranormal investigators there are out there, the more possibility we've got at actually getting proof. Mm of the phenomena that other people witness and that we witness but we you know we, we're either that slight half a second behind it too much or we've just seen it at the corner right but someone will get it providing and talk properly and what you just said and this is one of the things i you know i, I know about what you do that that, that you know, you're with people that they have a good time but they actually experience the event mm, so what you do exactly. you experience the event it's not just let's go there let's get as 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 as, as much as, as much money as we can yeah. get do as little as possible mm -hmm. i know of people and this is one of my big things with, see I, I think we should, we should start looking at some sort of regulation mm. with certain paranormal groups because I know people who um, will get a celebrity or, or someone known in the industry and will get them to come in for half an hour. Yeah. And they will you know, they can charge whatever they charge, mm -hmm. it's up to them, but the people will come along to see that person. Mm. And to, you know, not just, oh it's so and so, so and so from the telly, it's literally because they've had a wealth of experience in the paranormal. And they will think, I want to talk to them. But half an hour they'll come in, blah, 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 enjoy. Mm -hmm. And then they'll go home. Now, mm -hmm. that, for any experience, I know if that was my first experience, I probably wouldn't go. On yeah, it, it puts you off um, basically for life. If you, if you don't get the right experience to start with, um, it's like you say, there are a lot of groups that have people come in um, as a special guest. And, and I've been to events where people have been in special guests as well as myself. Can I just hold you there? Yep. And we're, uh, continue that straight after cool. the break yeah. because we've just got to uh, go away. Join us in a couple of minutes. Hello, thank you very much for uh, joining us again. We're talking about paranormal groups uh, here. Now, Phil, you were just talking before the break um, about specific uh, genres of paranormal groups. Yeah, um, specifically the, the area where special guests are um, kind of commissioned to come into an event with mm -hmm. paranormal groups and they're, they're there for half an hour or so. Like you, you just touched upon a moment ago. Um, and what kind of gets me, because I've obviously been on special guests um, on events myself, is that they normally turn up, plug their book, and then sell a couple of copies and then go. Um, which again, isn't quite fair on the people that turn up to 
to A, do the investigation, hoping that they're going to be with the, the, the famous you know, special guest all night. Yeah. Um, it's not fair, really. No, is it, I don't know, I mean, what, what about you? I mean, going from the other side of, of, of purely investigative, I mean, your, your group is about purely investigating places and, mm -hmm. and getting or trying you know, to get phenomena recorded or to understand it and report on that phenomena. There's a lot of those groups around there who are the, the public events company who are, and there are, there are a lot of rogues out there. Yeah, I mean, I think um, it's, it's like in anything, you get a lot of competition as well. You'll get the, the, the groups out there that will say, we welcome in everybody, we want to share our ideas, uh, you know, we're all in this together, we're all here for the same reason. Which is the way it should be. Which is mm. the way it should be. But then you get the other people that come along, and, and then you get um, the competition, the bitchiness, and, and then it gets to be a paranormal yeah, war. It is very groups, bitchy, it, isn't it? It, just it gets, can be very, very, it very bitchy. Yeah. Well, it, it, it's, I, I don't think I've ever known any type of industry, bearing in mind, you know, I've been in television for... 25 odd years, mm -hmm. and, and I mean that's an extremely bitchy, especially you know with, with um, when I was a cameraman, you know there were lots of cameramen who, uh, and you know who you are, um, <laughs> who were, you know, some of their egos were that big, they thought they were bigger than the people they were filming, yeah. and, but it was, that was a bitchy thing, and you know I hated it, absolutely hated it, and, but the paranormal, is something TV's else. Got nothing yeah, on the it's something else. And I think it's because it's not a proven science. Anyone can go out there and basically do it. Mm. Or no, sorry. Everyone can go out there and think they can mm. do it. And this is one of the things with, with what you said is that you have a when you come along on a, a paranormal investigation, it's great fun. You know, you can. It's hard work. Cause this is the other thing people don't realise mm. is that mm. they all think it's nice, cosy manor houses in, in you know in some beautiful countryside somewhere. They don't realise that no, it's caves. It's it's dank by the side of the road when it's, it's in the middle of you know, pub attics and things like that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's 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 uh, it's woodland. It, mm. It's coal, and and it's 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 quite a hard thing. It's fun, but it's hard it's, work. And a lot of people don't realise that a lot of the time you're sitting there in the dark, freezing your nads off with um, nothing happening. With nothing happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But this is one thing. I mean, there's, there's, there's shows like you know, obviously the, the ones that you know we've done when we did most haunted, mm. as you can you can vouch for that that you could s sit at a, a, at a séance table for an hour yep. and nothing happened. Mm. Maybe somewhere towards the end of the second hour happened, but of course by the time it gets on the television, of course you're not going to show an hour and exactly. fifty minutes of nothing. Mm. You show the ten minutes where it happened, and people yep. automatically at home think. I tell you what, I don't know why, but I've been at this table for 10 minutes and nothing's happening. Oh, exactly. They do, they do yeah, that on our events. They do that, yeah. They'll be sat yeah. there with a finger on the glass for two minutes and it's not moved and be like, this is boring. It it happened, see it? Five minutes on Most Haunted, it's happening all over the place. And I actually, I actually go through the situation with them. Because yeah. a lot of people don't realise that the amount of footage that we filmed on, on Most Haunted when we were doing it, when I was doing it with you guys, um, is phenomenal. And they, don't, they tend to forget that it actually gets edited down. Yeah, to an hour long episode. 24 hour shoot, yeah. up to anything up to 27 cameras yeah. shooting an hour at a time, yeah. up to 46 minutes. I think when, when, when I was doing it with, with you guys um, in first season two, three and four, um, there was a minimum of 65 hours worth of footage yeah, to edit it down to an hour long episode. Yeah. And of course, like you say, you're not going to put in the boring bits where we're just sat there twiddling our thumbs going, God, crikey, come on, something happened. Well, you can't, and it's funny because we, 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 we looked at, I mean, we did look at doing something with that, and the channel, you know, really did look at every avenue mm. of trying to show all of that unseen footage, but you just can't because it's... it's you would lose viewing figures, surely. I mean, well, it, it, it's not, I mean, the channel were really behind it and trying to get something out of it, but, you know, how do you show 65 hours of nothing happening and right. people watch, even mm. the people out there say, I want to see that. They'd probably watch it for 10 minutes and then all turn it off, so you wouldn't get that back. But I just think, back to the, 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 the actual people that do it, I, again, I think it somehow it should be regulated. I don't know how that would work because, like yourself, you know, you can, uh, you, you can, I know how you operate your, 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 your prospective businesses, mm. and it is very open, it is very, you know, we will help you, we will help you learn to do paranormal investigations. And it is very hurtful when, when people that you've helped and trusted, that's the, the big thing, you trust, and then all of a sudden they'll go off and start their own thing, which is fair enough if that's what they want to do. Mm. But suddenly they start, these people will start having a go at the people who actually helped them out in the first place. Yeah. And you sit there and you think, what did I do? <laughs> you know, yeah. what I did, without yeah. me giving them that opportunity, they wouldn't be doing what they're doing. And it is very hurtful, but that takes away from what we're really doing, it doesn't matter. You know, if they don't like the way you do an investigation, then 
keep it to yourself. Just do it somewhere different. Mm. The point is, is that you do investigation the way you do investigation. And as I say, you know, we've got a lot of it is about reputation, and a lot of these other people who do it, that their reputation isn't there. You know, your reputation rose very rapidly, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, because of what you did, and people that know of you. But that goes back to not just people who, who have been on the investigations with you. This goes back to the places you've been. This goes back to you know the, the owners of houses, mm. and that's the, the the point when somebody breaks off. They may not have the insurance. They may not have the, and people allow them into their priceless manor houses, mm -hmm. walking past priceless works of art, mm -hmm. sitting on hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of antique furniture, potentially ruining it. Yeah. And they don't ask for anything, there's no ID, there's nothing. Strangers are coming in people's houses. Mm -hmm. But how do we stop it? Uh, so, so, obviously, the, the first thing I would say um, is if you're a location or a property entertaining the idea of perhaps having an, a, an investigation company come in to hold an event with you, um, you make sure you see the, the right documents before you agree to anything. But what are the right documents? Are there things like the insurance? Yeah, public insurance? liability insurance. Um, make sure you've got your terms and conditions sorted out with them. Um, and basically make sure who, heaven forbid anything happens, accident-wise or whatever, make sure who is, is liable for what, Yeah, basically. Absolutely. I think references as well. References. Other yeah. venues that you've been mm. to, because that, to me, is the most important thing. Yeah. Because anybody can go and get their insurance and say, oh yeah, we're covered for this. But if they've only been doing it for a month, two months, where have they been to actually show that they are trustworthy people? Mm -hmm. But you see, this is, this is, that's, that's, a, that's a very good point you just brought up. A, a lot of people will like, tag on to, I would say, tag on to, to, to White Rose that, you know, and just literally think, well, I'll, I'll, I'll come to a few of these for a couple of months, mm -hmm. then I'm an expert. And I don't realise, it's, you know, you didn't decide one morning, oh, I'm going to start White Rose up, you know, because I've, you know, I've, I've never really been interested in the paranormal, but I saw a horror film last night. And mm -hmm. I'm gonna, they don't realise that these things come from years of interest in mm -hmm. something and your own personal work to get something done and these people will tag on and think I can do the same thing mm -hmm. and, and it, I mean it's annoying but they, surely these people can't last because they haven't got the, 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 the passion and there's a passion you need. Yeah exactly I mean how long you've been doing uh, you're interested in the paranormal for years and years and years mm -hmm. I've been doing it. Uh, people see me on Most Haunted and think oh it's got two it's years worth thing. Thing. Well, yeah. <laughs> people see me on my social and think, oh, he's, he's only been doing this for two years because that's basically how long I was on Most Haunted for. Well, that's not the case. I've been doing this since I was 16, interested in the paranormal. The reason we, we, you know, we were desperate, desperate trying to get you on Most Haunted because you, know, you, you, you were known throughout the industry for, you know, for what you did mm. and your interest in the paranormal. Then you did, um, uh, what was the first show you did? Scream Team. Scream yeah. Team, the first show. And this really, you know, that was really successful, mm. did really well. And it was literally, we tried to get you, you know, off of that onto the show and you couldn't do it because you had to honour those mm -hmm. commitments. But yeah. once you did that, we managed to get you on the show. Um, I said, people do, they think, because you're most haunted for a few years or whatever it was, uh, they think, oh, that's, you started. Yeah, that's but, when I started. But they forget, like, you know, Yvette and myself, we've had an interest in the paranormal for years. Yeah. It wasn't just, we didn't wake up on one and make a TV show. Most people who are in the business um, and, and to any extent are successful in the paranormal business, no matter what kind of business of, of the you know, area of the genre it is, have a passion of, of, you know, for being interested in ghosts and hauntings and, and paranormal. I mean, I'm sure Fred's, you know, when he was on Most Haunted, I'm sure he had a, a, a lot of interest in the paranormal before he came oh, yeah. on Most Haunted. Since I was about 16. Yeah. yeah. Well, but the thing is, you, 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 you've, you've had this interest in the, the, the paranormal because of you know, obviously not just where you live now, where you've lived before has been haunted and where you live now, you, 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 your business is haunted. And again, you know, quite substantially haunted. You know, it's quite mm -hmm. rare that you get so many stories in, in, in a couple of places and linked. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that always got me was that the house that you moved into was linked to the club that you've owned for years prior to owning the house. Yeah. And there's that weird, and you wouldn't have known that had you not done, and then done the research mm -hmm. after yeah. it. No, that's true. But you have a lot of paranormal groups come to the club, don't you? Yeah, I, yeah, I used to have, um, not so much now, although there are a couple that want to come in. Um, but I say the last one, and I'll name him because he was named anyway, so if anybody uh, sees anything by it, he's got a doctor before his name, a DR, Marty Kia, CIA. Um, I would think twice before you part with your money because that's the one who ripped everybody off and the police and trading standards dealt with it. Mm, okay. I mean, that's but, obviously your, your, your opinion on that. And well, it's a it's a fact, sure. yeah, and it's my opinion. Yeah. yeah.
people. No, but, but that's the point, is that shows how easy it is for people to jump on this bandwagon. Mm. Every, everybody would like to spend time in a haunted house. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't they? I mean, let's face it, you know, mm. it's something, as kids, it's that kind of, could you, you know, would you like to spend the night in a, in a haunted house? Yeah, you'd scare yourself. What's really strange is, is when it? I moved into my house, which is, as you know, an old 21 room manor house, I was always a bit reluctant of ghosts. If someone had said, too up, too down. <laughs> yeah, if someone had said to me there's a haunted house down the road, go and stay the night there, I mean, before I've got into what I'm into now, I would have run a mile. Well, not run a mile, but I wouldn't have gone and stayed the night on my own. But with my house, I go up the stairs now saying, come on, show yourself. Yeah. It's really strange because I want to see what's there. I know the spirit's there because I can feel them around me all the time. But you never actually see anything. And as you know, it's quite rare to actually see a ghost. You yeah, feel it. You have a paranormal group in your house. One, yeah, but only like four people. I wouldn't have a big group in there. Because mm. that's probably the other thing is that and I, I, I'm amazed you know, at people who let groups of people into yeah, their homes. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there's anyone out there who's watching this now. If, yeah. if he said if they got a knock on the door and said, mm. uh, "Oh, there's ten of us want to come around and look at you, what, look through yeah. the house for the whole night," there's not one of those people who would let them people in. People approached yeah. us. Like, it was mm. a private group. I get people that have their own house that actually approach us that really? want us to go in there. Is, that's down to your reputation. Yeah, that's a good mark of your reputation. Because I mean, yeah. yeah. people will say to you, you know, their first thing will be, you know, our house is haunted. We would like some proof of that. So who are we going to who are we going to ask? And that, I mean, that, that's that's a huge compliment. Mm. The fact that they do. But there's lots there who who will literally just be out there constantly on that phone trying to. I mean, we. We've, we've yeah. had it. We have, we have so many complaints from people who, who dupe other people, use other people's names, including mm. ours, to get into locations. And again, just going back to the, the private investigations that you, your group does, what's the idea of people, you know, being asked to come and investigate a property, a private property, because they think they've got problems with spirits or ghosts or whatever? What's the idea of then that group charging them mm. an extortionate amount of money to do it? I mean, mm. it should be a privilege. Mm. To oh, go into someone's house and check it out and give them a report on what might be happening. Mm. But I think this is this is almost one of those one of those. Um, I think you can blame the media for that to a point. And you know, I've got to hold my hand up. I'm part of that uh, blame. And so are you. <laughs> you there with us. No good. You look at me. Going, <laughs> your fault. But we're going. We're going we'll have another look at that after the break. Please don't go away. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to the Great Unexplained Debate. We're talking about paranormal groups now. We're, we're just before the break. We're talking about. Um, uh, about people's houses going into groups and uh, or groups coming to people's houses and being asked to come into people's houses which is a, a, a huge compliment but the media we see if I've said I put my hand up I'm partly responsible for and so are you not as much um, as you uh, you say that <laughs> um, but I, I think there's a, a because people see a, a buck in it and, and, and there's, a, there's a point where, where if you're going to invite, if you're looking at the public mm. uh, coming onto investigations, you've got, if you, you had 50 people and you're charging them 50 quid a head, yeah, it's an awful lot of money, an awful lot of money to be mm. made. But the people who, are, who, are, who have got the hotel or the house or the wallet, they'll think, well, if I charge five grand, then Surely all you would do is put five grand onto it and say well, whatever I make, you know, if I'm selling 50 tickets, it's obviously got to be, you know, 100 quid plus mm. another 50 for me. Mm. So you make two and a half grand out of it while they're making their five. Mm. But it's big money. It's huge, huge money. I know, I know of one uh, individual who put over 700 people one night through uh, one particular haunted house. I mean, it was literally, I mean, diabolical. But well, they charge him for that, wasn't they? Oh, they charge. Yeah. They charge. It was. It was. It was small. It was small money, but for big, big return. And I think mm. it was something like ten quid a ticket or right. seven fifty a ticket. But with yeah, you know, seven hundred fifty people going through, that's an awful lot of money. But what I'm trying to say is, that with that sort of thing, is that that's almost a, you treat people as cattle, just throwing them through, mm. not going to learn anything. They, you know, there's not going to be any, any personalisation there, is there? But most of the time, these people pay six pounds and go through it in the daytime on their own. Yeah. Yeah, because a lot of these paper open to the public. But that's that's the point. I mean, what, what is a good a good amount of money? What 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 is for? I a, think a, a one of the best ones I think that's ever been done is when we did the stage show at Caesars, mm -hmm. and the whole you were there as well, Phil, and. 
I, th I don't know how many hundred people. There's a few hundred people there, wasn't there? Oh, there's a lot of people. Yeah, there. and in the yeah, end, the vet system. ended up in the middle of the place doing a seance with all of them. Yeah, and that was before yeah. the live shows. That, yeah, you know, before most haunted lives. That was that was that was quite good. Yeah, no, that was that was good. Yeah, and we had actually done a couple of long. Oh, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The one night stand. Right. Yeah. But, but that was that people. I mean, that was bizarre. That evening. Mm. people was trying. To Literally yeah. was ran us against walls to get autographs. It was bizarre. Yeah, I remember was you, do you remember you, you, one of your security guys had to pull me through the uh, yeah. fire exit at one yeah. point? I was yeah. getting crashed. Yeah, and that was I a really, really very good. It, it was the first time you'd done anything like that, like a stage show. Oh, we never show. done a stage show. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was, yeah, it was, was really good. good. But the, but that's that, that's the point. You can, yeah, you know, we got a great deal of people. Yeah, you, you could have. You could have completely conned every single one of those people out of yeah. 50, 60 quid each if you mm. wanted to. And that was in the early days, that was the second series of most yeah, times, so series. now it would be even worse. Yeah, it would, yeah, it would be, but, but, you, but that's the point, it, is that, that the media's created almost a little bit of a monster, because 10 years ago, you could have probably gone almost anywhere if you wanted to, yeah. and they'd have let you in because of your reputation, mm -hmm. because of what you wanted to do. Mm. Now, there's almost this point where you, you can contact someone and go, yeah, five grand. What is a good amount though? What's, 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 or should they charge or should they not charge? Um, to a certain extent, I, obviously I agree that they, they should be charging something because you're in the premises. They normally have to get somebody to man the premises while you're there um, for the location. Well, the problem is with mine, it costs me three and a half grand just to open the doors. Yeah, there you so go. So I normally charge people, say, three and a half to four grand. Yeah. But they make it back on the ticket sales. Yeah. So, so I mean, because every little hold two thousand people, but I mean a good amount for an investigation is three four hundred, I suppose. So they can make the money back. Yeah, but that's what I have to charge because of the, yeah. the overhead. Exactly. Yeah. Yours, yours is almost a unique. Yeah. Thing because it's the, mm. it's the biggest night mm. in London. I mean, it's a mm. huge, huge area. So you yeah. know, and, and the fact that your overheads just to open it up are, mm. are very, very high. high. But very a high. lot of these places are houses that actually doesn't cost them anything mm. to open up. Uh, yeah. Hotels, I can understand if. They got people in, but quite mm. often you go in the down times when there aren't any, anybody there. So, yeah, what, what would you, what would you guys, as a from from both different perspectives, you know, one as a public events company, one as just a private uh, investigative company, which was I never paid anything to investigate no. anywhere as a private group, never. Just so pleased you said that. Yeah. <laughs> um, all I can tell you is the most that we've paid for an event or a, a location. Um, would be. Uh, it depends. It must. Depend. It, it depends on obviously on how well known the location is, on how grand the location is. Um, and I think we've got one coming up that um, is is nearly two thousand right. pounds. So, uh, and that's probably. I mean, there are locations that, that um, certainly since the onset of um, the media frenzy regarding paranormal um, uh, genre and, and um, television and that kind of thing. A lot of locations have cottoned on to the fact that they can charge a lot more than they really should be charging. What sort of location is that one? The two um, this is um, this is a hall in Derbyshire that we're Just going to be doing hall. on uh, yeah Halloween time. So again, you're probably paying more for the Halloween time as well. Mm. This is the point. You see that, that, that it, you know, I'm really pleased that you don't you don't pay because I don't think uh, a paranormal investigative group should have to pay to investigate the paranormal because normally. The whole idea of paranormal groups was there to help people mm -hmm. who had some sort of problem that they wanted solving. I don't actually mean you know exercising; they wanted solving. They wanted answers. But so they would, you know, they would quite often they would have paid you to come there. Mm -hmm. But, I, your time and but you see, then I would say, why would I want to let people around my house just to let them around my house? Yeah, but no, no, because you're happy with what's gone in your house. Yeah. But the only reason you'd want people in your house is if you wanted answers to what's in there, yeah. mm -hmm. and if you want answers, it's like. If I, if I want to find out about something, I have to go and buy a book. It costs me money to buy a book. Mm -hmm. I don't call up a, a, a bookshop and say, do you fancy bringing some books around and mm -hmm. um, uh, give us 300 quid and I might take one off you <laughs> to give me the information. You, know, you have to go and get, you're, you don't want any information because you've done most of your information. But a lot of people have got weird things happening and they call you up and say, can you come around because there's something something strange in the neighbourhood? Mm -hmm. But most yeah. ghost, most <laughs> ghost groups, though, they contact a location, then they charge the members of the ghost group to pay for what the location wants. It works it's the other way a, around. It's another way of doing it. I don't particularly yeah. agree with it because I, mm -hmm. I think to myself, what, why why would you want to be paying? I wouldn't have thought as many um, many locations else. call up an actual ghost group, do they? 
I mean, they may call most wanted, no, but they... You, you, you'd be surprised, yours as White Rose gets, gets called. Yeah, we get yeah. called. Um, yeah. I have to say, though, that the majority of the places that we've been to mm. are not the, the ones that are on the map, they're not the known places. Mm. Mm. Um, so when you get... It, again, that gets into another category of event, because you're talking about the, the ones that are more well-known, mm. they're the ones where the events companies can go to, because yeah. they're... So company, you're the charger, the she's not. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, but, that, but that, because there's, it, it, it's, a, it's a business and yeah. an interest yeah. at the yeah. end of the day. You know, I mean, people, and I hope your venues don't think I'm out of line here, <laughs> but no, but, obviously, but in all honesty, you know, people will be paying money to come and see you. Right. Because you're a known face. Mm. You're, you're, you're someone people know and respect and want to see you, you be on the TV and, and everyone knows who you are. So. Your ticket sales, people will come to say, I. So they can go to work on Monday mm. and say, I spent Friday night or Saturday night with Phil Wyman. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that point. I, I, mm. I've done an investigation before. When they when they talk to their friends about paranormal investigation work, they say, Oh, I've done an investigation with Phil Wyman. Mm -hmm. And you know, it almost doesn't matter where that location is. I know it does for the. It does to you for the phenomena, and it has to be a good place. Yeah, for them, quite mm. obviously, it's just free. They want to be near you because obviously you know what you're doing, you get, yeah, they, they can get some stuff off, or some information off mm. of you of how to do better ghost investigations. And that's, that's what they come for, they come for that whole experience which you know, they get. Yeah, I mean I, I still get emails from people saying, oh we're interested in coming on this event, uh, is Phil Wyman going to be there? And I'm like, well, I actually reply to myself saying, yeah of course I'm going to be there until the, the time we go, until you leave. Oh, can we ask you questions and all this kind of thing? I'm like, no, you can't talk to me. <laughs> you can look at me just I'm thinking, too much. I'm thinking, what kind of people, you know, person do they think I am? And I'm like, you can ask me whatever you want. And, and I, I really enjoy doing that. I really enjoy getting, um, mm. you know, in, socialising and interacting with people that come on my events mm. and giving them that little bit extra as a way of saying, not only thank you for coming on the event, but thanks for, you know, watching yeah. on the shows I've been on and supporting me in the past. Mm. Yeah. I don't I mean, mind doing that's that. Probably, that's, and that's the huge difference between the, the two types of events, which mm. is, you know, you've got, you, which you're kind of, you're interested in, uh, in, in, in not getting a lot of people there. Mm -hmm. You're interested in just what you, you can find with a, with, a, with a group of people that you know and trust. And, yeah. You know, and uh, unfortunately, you can't always trust everybody. Mm. But you, 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 people you know and trust, like with yours, it, it's that point of getting other people out there who wouldn't normally have the opportunity to, to do a, a paranormal mm. investigation. And, and it's almost like to the masses to do it properly. Because, yeah. again, I know of so many that will throw out 100 people at a time to do an investigation mm. and we never do that well you, you, you can't there's no way you can't it's when i see, when when um, you look in the 70s it's a similar thing to the, the, the bruce lee thing we came out of, with, with the kung fu thing mm. trust me there's i am going somewhere with this okay. but um but there was this huge kung fu explosion and although it did some good because it gave the awareness of kung fu out to, to people it did a great deal of damage because it, it there's so many bogus martial arts schools to turn mm. out people I mean, you heard, we've all heard stories of the guy in the pub saying, I'm a black belt in mm. Kung Fu, which there aren't black belts, they're black sashes, but I'm a black belt in Kung Fu, and, you know, so watch me, and just get beaten up by yeah. you know, a five-year-old child. Mm. <laughs> and, and, yeah, that did a lot of damage, and that's a similar thing, I think, to a lot of the paranormal groups who are going out and doing a lot of damage to the ones that really are doing it the is, work. It is, it um, is. And again, I, I'm always saying we never max out our events. Why would we? It's not ethically correct. I'm not. I'm not certainly not in it to make millions and millions of, of, of money from it, millions of quid from it. Um, but but the, this is the, the, the money thing. Yeah. See, this is something that I, I'm, I'm asked a lot mm. about about money. You know, should people make money out of it? Yes. Mm. Of course you should. You know, you you have mortgages. It's, it's this point like doctors exactly. doctors charge money to save people's lives. Yeah. Mm. Um, it, it, it's it's a everyone has an a, an outgoing that has to be paid mm -hmm. for. The difference is it's 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 when you wake up in the morning and say how much money can I make out of it? Yeah. That's wrong. Yeah. But by making money out of what you do and love, that's yeah. nothing wrong. You're giving a fair you're giving a fair trade for a fair price. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you, you, people can't expect more than that. Mm. And I know a lot of people out there who no one's ever heard of who charge a dime time more than you do for, for things and get people there. Yeah. And the trouble yeah. is, and you know, we cause we get lots of phone calls, lots of emails from people who complain about paranormal groups, and some of them are very well known paranormal mm. groups. There was one that, that associated themselves with with us at, at one point, 
and the the complaints we got were quite severe. I mean, they were, they were almost criminal at some point, um, and we just passed those on to the police. But when you start getting that in, the damage has already started, and it's people like you know, like yourselves and other other groups out there mm. who are doing it properly and doing it for the right reasons lose out. Mm. Yeah, um, it does. It has a it has a major effect. Um, people probably don't think it does, but it it does. I mean, again. Um, are, going back to the locations, not letting us in because they've had a, a dodgy group in there and that kind of thing. And uh, just going back to the point where you mentioned, um, should you charge for it, that kind of thing. Again, people perhaps don't see that each location we do, we do have to pay a fee for. Absolutely. We have to pay a fee for. Of course we do. We're not gonna, they're not going to let us in for nothing in the middle of the night when they're not normally open. I say, well, still we're not open. We've, actually, we've got to close down for a couple of minutes uh, for a commercial break, but please join us. We won't be long. Thank you very much for uh, joining us again. Um, we're talking about paranormal groups uh, here with um, Phil Wyman, Sarah and uh, Fred. Um, we're kind of looking at the, 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 the options of, of should we charge, how much should we charge and um, there seems to be two fairly big divides here and, I, and I, I hadn't really looked into it that much until this conversation and I agree that I think once you've got a private like White, like White Rose, once you've got this private uh, investigative groups that come in there. I don't think you should be charged for it because you're doing. I think you're 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 doing a service mm -hmm. for for people. You're you're and, and yourselves, but you're giving people information about their properties. Obviously, with a public events company like yourself, of course you should be charged. Mm. Yeah, you know, that that's put on the call. Like everywhere else, mm. I mean, to do this show, we have to pay for this room. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to pay for the cameras. We have to pay for the tape. You know, it, it's every, everyone has to pay for stuff. And should you make money out of it? Yeah, of course you should. Why not? Yeah. There's, there's, there's not a problem with that. As long, uh, again, as, as long as you're not extortionately overpriced, which some groups, you know, even I can see that some groups are, when we look around, because obviously we're, we've got competitors, um, or so to think, and we have a look around and see when they're charging twice as much for an event that we're doing, that, you know, and they're charging twice as much. Why? Why are they charge you twice as much? Mm. You know? I know, but it's a quick, it's the thing you, you, you sort of said earlier, you know, a lot of people are out there for a quick buck, and it's a very easy way to make a quick mm. buck. Let's face it, you know, you're in, you know, you're in the nightclub business, and, and you know for a fact that if you can get 2,000 people in your club for 20 quid a head, mm. you're making money. Yeah, exactly. So, if, but you know, on a paranormal point, if you could get 2,000 people in you know, your club and charge them 20 quid a head, mm. you'd just make 40,000 mm. pounds. In one night, mm. and you know there are people who will go there, take the money, and like you said, you've had mm. people who've, who actually hadn't done the event; they've just taken the money, and, yeah, and right. you've had to get the police yeah. involved. But you've had, um, you can imagine somebody going out and doing the event. There's actually not a lot people can do if they don't enjoy it. Mm. No. You know, if you've got two thousand people in a huge event like that, and someone standing on the stage going, "Right, have a wander yeah. around, and uh, and just let me know what you pick up, guys." Yeah. yeah. You yeah. can't do that. You can't do that because if you're at the some business, groups do though. You, you're wanting people to come back as well. Um, we do get a lot of people that come on our events that come back again. So mm -hmm. that just proves to me that we, we provide a good um, service, if you like, um, a good night. Even if nothing happens, you know, they'll still come back and join us again for another night. Yeah. Because again, that's the hardest thing to convey to people when they're coming on to any investigation is nothing may happen. Exactly, nothing may happen. And that brings us on to a, one of my major gripes. I know, again, for a fact, from people that have been on other companies' events, that um, certain members do, shall we say, encourage activity, enhance, enhance yeah. paranormal even activity. Even the venues as well. Yeah, even the venues, believe okay. it or not. I, I, no, I, I'm, I'm with you on the venues because, um, I mean, we, we've only ever encountered it. Fortunately, we've only ever encountered it once, and it was the first time we ever walked away from a venue at having had a show already booked to go there, we turned up and we started the investigation, we'd done all of our shooting in the day, we started the investigation out in the venue, clearly had somebody hiding and doing stuff and we actually picked up everything, turned around and walked out again. Right. And, and the, fortunately, um, everyone, we, we, we were very happy because everyone did the next show and, and we were fine. Yeah. But yeah, and the channel backed us up on it. But that could have quite easily have been, if we hadn't noticed it, yeah. we could be sitting there like fools yeah. thinking, we've got some fantastic Mm. This is great. This is the best place ever in the world. Go on the internet. The scariest place we've ever been to is Blah. Um, 
Yeah, and, and, it, and it just be them faking it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, which is why um, we we adopt a strict policy on the events that that, that we do together, because Sarah um, obviously is my kind of co-host for the, the Dead Haunted events. We adopt a strict policy with the, the team leaders um, that nobody actually takes part in the experiments. Mm. So, for instance, we'll tell you, we'll explain how it goes and what it's all about, how you do it, we'll supervise you doing it, okay, but for instance, glass divination, we won't sit there as members of DHN, Dead on Tonight, uh, with our fingers on the glass, because if it moves, we don't want people thinking, you've done that, it's your event. So we actually explain to the fact, to, to the people that come on our events, that you might notice something a bit strange, the team leaders won't take part in the experiments and this is why. Mm. And they all, they, and we, when we say to them, we would prefer you, in all honesty, to go home experiencing nothing at all, rather than you thinking that we might have had something to do with something moving. Well, this, this, this actually almost is a very tenuous link. Actually, not that tenuous, but the last conversation we had, uh, uh, previously shot, that we, we mentioned about fake mediums, and we mm. said that if they're caught being fake once, they should never be allowed to practice again, which is my belief. Mm -hmm. I mean, personally, I don't think they should be allowed to practice anyone, but I think if they're caught once, they shouldn't be able to, they should be name shamed and kicked out of the industry. But should we be able to do the same with this? You know, one person seen doing something should then not be able to get a job or a, be a participant in any paranormal investigation. If, if they're aware, fully aware of the situation that they shouldn't be, obviously, fraudulently creating paranormal activity and they know that when they take the, the job on and they get caught and found out doing it, then I don't think they should be working for another paranormal group. Yeah. Why shouldn't they? Because there's this point of, of over-exuberance and, and, and there's, there's, a, there's, a, yeah, there's, there's other things like you know, micromotor muscular movement. So you know, right. you've kind of got, you know, you've got your, uh, I'll just go tip that over there. Um, you've got your, your, your glass upside down and I, I'm not a Ouija board fan. Because I just think, you know, I, I mean, there's, there's people I trust, and usually when it's very rare that it ever moves when just those people I trust are around the table. It, I mean, it does move, right. and I'm not saying it's people making it move, knowingly making mm -hmm. it, but yeah, you know, you've got the slightest little twitch that you may not even know you've done could set that on a path mm -hmm. that other people are just going with, yeah. and you probably don't even know you're doing it, yeah. so subconsciously you're doing it. Now, is that not fraud, or is that just... But if your team leaders and anybody connected to your paranormal event company doesn't take part in those experiments, mm. then uh, that's for the people that are actually taking part, and your members of the public and your guests taking part in the experiments to make their own minds up about. Mm -hmm. You know, for all I know, it could be paranormal activity, it could be mm. what you mentioned, um, subconscious movement of the glass, or actually the slip of the glass and people kind of carry it on. Um, but that is for, for the people taking part in the experiment to make their minds up about. Mm. And most of the people um, are intelligent enough to do that, that come on our events. Mm. No, I have to admit, it, it is that, it, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult call to mm. make. But when you do your private stuff, I mean, do you, ha do you ever have people on there that you don't know? No. It's always people just that group. you know. So mm. it's just a group that you kind of, you work yeah. with and you... You've it's a core team you've got, isn't it? Yeah. About five or six people. Yeah, we, we used to do, when we first started, because we had a, an internet forum and we used to get, obviously, a lot of people joining, saying, can we come on? <laughs> internet forum. Yeah. We're and, from those places. I'll stick clear now, but, um, but yeah, we, we did. They're for nasty, angry little people. They are. Yes. Plus yes. little people. But anyway, um, we did have people come along, but it just got to the point where, like you say, you have to have people around you that you can trust. Mm -hmm. to be able to get any kind of results and to be able to know what you're experiencing not might you know we might say it's not paranormal but we can rule out any um, interference from other people there see that that's the thing and, and I think so when we when we've had stuff that we can trust as you well know and we, we used to go on vigils when you had a, a, a group of people that you knew you could trust more stuff happened with people you knew you could trust than if you had just one person who you knew you couldn't, I mean, if they were talking about, if they were on that particular vigil, nothing would happen, unless they made it happen, and, you know, but you kind of have this, and I, I, I'm, I'm convinced it's an energy thing, it's a trust thing, once you're with people that you know you can trust, because you're allowed to, you're not sitting there thinking, that creek, or oh, was, that, was that somebody moving mm -hmm. something, or was that somebody hiding, is that somebody like, once you've got all that out of your mind, your mind's clearer to do what you want to do, which is an investigation mm -hmm. into the paranormal. 
I think we've, um, we've come to the end of the, uh, the show again now. Sorry, I've waffled on a bit there, but uh, thank you guys so much for coming in. Okay. Sarah, Phil, thank you. Fred, really do appreciate it. And good luck with the events because thank um, you very much. I'm coming on with you soon, aren't I? You are indeed, yeah. Um, but thank you very much, guys, for coming in. And please join us next, next time on uh, the great unexplained debate. I forgot where we were then. <laughs> See you soon. Bye bye.